a lot of terrorists won't want to say, oh, I've done a bad tattoo, because it's a, that is a very ego-driven industry. Like, there's everyone wants to be the best. And when you're the same things are getting said over and over, you think, well, it must kind of be true. Like, so say it's hate and carry on what you're doing, or man up and sort yourself out. Do you think you've took the industry to a new height? If you're doing something in five hours or eight hours, no matter who you are, that five hour tattoo is not gonna be as good as that eight hour tattoo because you're just gonna have put that little bit more detail in, you're gonna have finessed every bit of shade, you're gonna, it's just gonna look completely different. In today's age, do you think other tattooists starting up should start on social media as well? Put a little video on with one of the cats, just holding the cat, and that video went, went off. <laughs> that generated about 50,000 followers. Has it ever went against you, having tattoos? You can see like certain people are a bit judgy, like you get in a taxi and the guy's like, oh, uh, can you give me the money up front? Like it's like, is that because of the, like, the way I look? <laughs> it's going here, there and everywhere I have been the last two months, like say Vegas, I'm in Miami next month. They still book a couple of days and they'll do, they'll do a full leg, they'll do a round as well. Or they're going to make such a long journey or like I said, they're going to fly me out to wherever. They're going to, they're going to want a couple of days and get as much work as they can done basically. But what is the maddest tattoo that you've ever done? So today we are joined by Pengers, the tattooist. How are you doing mate? All right, content PT. Get it, mate. <laughs> obviously, it's been years since we started working together, mate. Um, but first and foremost, obviously, everyone's probably seen you on TikTok, millions of followers, doing bits on Instagram. I think I met you when you were on about 10K or something on Insta. Mm. You're up to about nearly 200 now. A while back. Things are going absolutely mental. You're getting noticed in the public now. People are starting to know who you are. Um, obviously, unbelievable type of skill you've got when it comes to tattoo. And I've seen tattoos from all around the world, but I've never seen someone who's done it quite as quick as you. There's definitely a world record you're breaking out there somewhere. Like, <laughs> um, but for the viewers and listeners, mate, I just want to say, like, how do you get to this level in the tattoo game? And how did your story begin? I mean, I think to the level that it's reached for me, some of that's down to luck and being in the right place at the right time more than um, anything else. I suppose <laughs> the right people share your stuff, the right people, or you do the right thing in your in what you're posting, the right content wise, you can you can get yourself further out there than just you posting your average stuff really so a lot of that's just down to the way I've promoted myself I suppose mm. I reckon more than anything is tattooing that popular in Manchester obviously it's where you're from here isn't it yeah I mean it's popular everywhere now mm -hmm. all over the world it's just growing as well it's more and more popular every year more and more people want to get into it become tattooists because they see see it looks like a good lifestyle to have and yeah how did you get into it though? Because obviously, again, it's that popular and people have been tattooing for years. What's allowed like you getting into the tattoo game? Um, to be fair, like it was kind of suggestions from the people around me really to give it a go because obviously I was still doing sort of bits of artwork and stuff when I left school, but I didn't really have a, any direction of where I wanted to go with stuff. And I suppose I'm kind of glad I got into it when I got into it because it wasn't quite as busy in the congested industry and I think that that's definitely helped in terms of if you're trying to get into it now it looks like a, an impossible task to get to a, a level from scratch you know especially trying to do it quickly like yeah why did you get into it though um just just for that I always enjoyed the artwork still doing bits and bats like and I think once I got a couple of tattoos myself and kind of was like yeah actually were you, this, this could be a this this could be good. Like, were you always an artist though? Do you know what I mean? Like, I wouldn't have said I was I was an artist. I said I, I always did artwork. I never really stopped doing that from being quite young to mm -hmm. even when I left school, even through college and stuff. I still, when I had spare time, I would sit and draw and and do bits of of stuff like that. So, not an artist, but. Yo, what's happening, people? If you are liking the episode so far, make sure you click the like button, hit the subscribe button, and also press the notification bell so you don't miss another episode. Um, like I said, once I'd, I'd had the suggestions of people, I'd done, started to move into that kind of tattoo style of artwork more towards like drawing actual tattoo designs um, and tried to get in, in studios in and around work, like in and around Rochdale, basically, but there wasn't many. There was only possibly two or three main studios there. All of them already had apprentices, so, um, yeah, a bit difficult, really, and then you kind of look down the other path, then, of, right, well, I'm going to have to teach myself here, so, mm -hmm. yeah, that was that was the next thing, right, I'm going to get a machine, I'm going to, 
I'm going to watch some clips on YouTube. Like, just a complete wrong way to do it. But <laughs> you, you're, seeing, you're seeing it's the wrong way, mate. I think that is the way. I think it's the only way. No, nah, the- what it is, is when you learn that way, you teach yourself so many bad habits. Mm-hmm. And until, if you can't get yourself then into a place where you can learn good habits from a, an artist who knows what they're doing, you're always going to have them bad habits and you're never going to progress. Mm-hmm. So a lot of the stuff I'd, taught myself i had to unteach and relearn basically so in terms of my progression as as a good tattooist it's probably took a lot longer than it would have done if i'd have gone in with a decent artist who knows what they're doing knows how to show you what to do and how to teach and and obviously learn the right way you'd bounce through the basics sort of quicker and yeah you could you could become better very a lot quicker than trying to teach yourself the thing is though the caveat to that i would say if you did stick with a, a tattoo who still taught you the right way you might have end up staying there possibly but like i said i always had that want to like do like do the best be the best you know go out there so i think i, would, I don't think i was ever destined to work for somebody else because I, I say it's funny and the reason i ask you this i'm the same i, I feel like i don't like it's not like I don't like working for people, but I feel like I just there's something empty when I do that. I feel like yeah. I've got to be my own person. Where do you think that comes from? Because clearly you've got it as well. Do you, do you think? Because I asked myself the question: like, is it an ego thing? Is it a case of you want it, to be the guy? I mean, is it a case? It could of, be, yeah. Because I would say sometimes I'm a bit of a show off. So mm-hmm. yeah, maybe it is that. But I think a lot of it, like even in school and stuff like that, I never really wanted to be told what to do. Mm-hmm. I always wanted to do my own thing. Mm-hmm. And I always worked better when I was left to do my own thing. So, yeah, like I said, working for somebody else was never really in my mind sort of thing. Were you a bad kid? Nah. No. Just cheeky, I suppose. Oh, yeah. yeah you've never, <laughs> never changed that, have you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So when it, when it came to, obviously, you going your own way and you said you had to learn kind of the things that you probably, the bad habits that you had to unteach yourself. Yeah. Were you actually bad at tattooing or just bad at the skill? When you look back, yeah, fucking awful. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah, of course. But, but I don't know any other tattooists that, that wasn't, do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. There's, there's, there's a couple of guys that you see that actually do get into it and do it the right way with top guys. Mm-hmm. And, you know, they don't do many bad tattoos and they learn the right way. And that's, that's how it should be done. Like, at the end of the day, like, I've probably done a hundred bad tattoos in that first couple of like that first year or when you when you're going at it and they're still out there yeah. whereas they're doing it and they learn the right way they're using the skins and then they've tutored properly when they're actually on a human so <clears throat> chances are that tattoo is still not going to be that bad anyway even if it's just the first one so yeah. then then and even if it is they've only put that one bad tattoo out there and they're probably going to keep that person as as their client then and keep working on that so at the end of the day there's only one person walking around with sort of a an average or a bad tattoo, whereas when you're doing it and you're just like, oh yeah, I'll tattoo that, I'll tattoo that. You're, like, you're just knocking out bad tattoos. There's so what you're people telling us, there's, there's, there's fucking loads out there. So, so there's hundreds of people out there with bad <laughs> tattoos. Yeah, there, is, there will be, yeah. No, so. that's, that's, it's but, nice for you to say that though, because I feel like everyone will just say what they're saying now on Instagram oh, and yeah, TikTok and all that. Yeah, never, never, and obviously ta- a lot of tattoos won't want to say, oh, I've done a bad tattoo, because it's a, that is a very ego-driven industry. Like there's, Everyone wants to be the best and better than everyone else and they'll shit on each other to fucking be there and bad mouth and fucking jokes, really. Like, When did you see that there was money to be made in this? Because um, I know you charge about 1,500 quid a day, didn't you? Yeah, I mean, the money I'm charging now is more to do with, obviously, the scale of the work and the fact that <clears throat> the demand for it, like, I've been able to do that. I've been able to say no to things. That was a big thing for me, being yeah. able to say when someone wants something new and like, and you know it's just not for you or they want something covering up and you just think it's gonna still gonna look horrendous afterwards. Like just being able to turn them away, mm-hmm. that's probably the, the top top thing you can have that. Cause if you're looking for trying to get money in, you're more tempted to take that work on and be like, yeah, yeah I can do it, I can do it. And that's when you're gonna put another bad tattoo out there, so. So you kind of learn to just say no so you can carve out only good work yeah basically really. it just it just means you can take on what you want you know everything that you're going to be putting out there is of a quality level that, that that you're happy with and yeah you're not you're not taking on things just for the money basically well the reason i ask about the money and the business side of things because for me i'm very i would definitely say i'm entrepreneurial mindset yeah. right and i know you are yeah 
Now, I don't know what every tattoo in the world makes, and I, and I don't really care. But what I do know is, if you're charging 1500 quid a day and you're pretty much booked out for the next couple of years, and you always are, every time your diary's open within like yeah. 10 minutes, it's gone. So even if now someone was watching this video and think, I want to book in with Pengers, then they're probably not going to get in with you. No. Nah, Unfortunately. It's, it and is it's hard. Like, and like, it's, it's frustrating sometimes that because obviously so many people want to get in. And because it's only open for that, like, that hour. And it's done. It's, it's there's a, such an influx of messages come through at that time and calls and, and there's people that I say they've been trying for four years and they've still not got through. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like it's frustrating because I can't get back to all them people either. Like mm-hmm. it's an impossible task and especially through the year when it's not open. Obviously, it's in my bio. Like if you actually look and you you go to the page, you can see it's closed. Like so. Yeah. When you're getting 50, 60 messages a day asking about that, for me to then, after I've finished work, sit there and answer all them, their messages just to say, look, the diary's closed. When it can see it's there, like, that's that's frustrating for me, like, because you get people that start being aggy then and start being like, oh, you don't reply yeah. and you don't do this, but it's just, I've got a fucking life as well. Yeah, <laughs> exactly, that's the thing. And what I was going to say is there, do you, do you think you've took the industry to a new height in terms of business or not? <laughs> I just think... Because I'm sure when you started, I, you didn't expect nah, to get I don't, this. I think I just, in, when it went off with like the TikTok and stuff like that, I just think I got noticed a lot. So there's, in that sense, like there's a lot of, there's a lot of guys now trying to do the same kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and a lot of that was due to obviously me doing stuff in like, like such a small time scale, really. Yeah. Um, and then you get these guys and they jump on it and they're knocking stuff out, sound, but like the technicals and certain bits of it, they're like, they're doing what I was doing at the beginning when I was trying to make it faster. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. taking details out, adding big negative spaces, using just one or two big images over the whole area. Whereas I kind of seen that then and I seen that that was getting noticed by by people and you can see that they're starting to generate like more clients. I think f- fair dudes, but like then they're getting compared to me. Then I thought, nah, you're not, that's not what I'm doing. Yeah. So then I've, I've kind of stripped it back and thought it's not about the time. Mm-hmm. It's not about the time scale. If you're doing something in five hours or eight hours, no matter who you are, that five hour tattoo is not going to be as good as that eight hour tattoo. Cause you're just going to have put that little bit more detail and you're going to have finessed every bit of shade. You're going to, it's just going to look completely different. Um, so the the thing for me, what I've realised is it's not about the time. It's about the fact you're doing it in one hit. It's the one session thing. So I would rather sit here and spend seven, eight, nine hours on a piece now than doing it in five hours just so I can say I've done it in five hours, basically. But you've still brought that element of the game, though, Penguin. Yeah, because... oh, yeah, I brought it in. I, well, I, don't, I wouldn't say I brought it in. So there's, an, there's another artist... Um, in Bali, Dodd mm-hmm. Dod Pras, I think it's called, and he was doing that years ago, mm-hmm. way before what, like I was. Fast tattoos. One of the guys I seen, yeah, I consider him like the OG in terms of that. Mm-hmm. Um, and that would that kind of inspired me, and I was like, fucking hell, yeah, how's he doing that kind of thing? So, yeah. and that's probably kind of the same way some of these other like these other ones that are coming through. I seen it like that's the way I had to do it. I thought I'm gonna have to strip this back, pull that out, just pe- like. That I can share that in a minute, but it might not be that smooth. But it's in there. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. And, so and, focus and, and on I started the doing that, and like, and obviously you do start generating more clients. You are knocking people. People are just looking at the quantity and not the quality a lot of the time. So they're just like, yeah, yeah, sweet, sweet, sweet. Get in and uh, and get and get and get as much work as I can done, basically. And like I said, for a, for a period of time, it was. It was it was just money like yes yeah, we I can do that in that bang I can do I can do two a day I can do fucking two. There's still a market a for that though because some people will want just a fast tattoo with as little yeah, pain as possible. Yeah, that's it. Like the, there's always going to be, but like I think, like once once the the online stuff started to go up and I started to get comments from people, um, even from other artists like, and you you you'd view it for start and you think oh there's haters but when someone's when you the same things are getting said over and over you think it must kind of be true like so you read back on it and stuff and it was stuff like bits look rushed this looks like that and that so you have to either say it's hate and carry on what you're doing or fucking man up and sort yourself out and yeah. and, and like be like you know, at the end of the day like they're right let's fucking make a change and then the work's going to go up another level again so that's why i peeled it all back started putting super like small detail bits into into things and Adding, adding a lot more coverage into the skin and making just making sure the whole piece was was finessed basically. 
and you, spending them extra, even if it was just, it started to just be the extra hour. So it went from like five to six hours. And I was thinking, yeah, well, still, once you start doing that, then you, and you start seeing how much better it looks, you want to do that throughout. So you just, you just adding more and more and more in. So it's, it's kind of gone. So now most day of my days are like eight hours where there was, yeah. there was f- five maximum. Some days it was less than five, mm-hmm. but I wouldn't dream of being able to knock out some of the stuff I'm done now in, in five hours. I know exactly what it looked like and it wouldn't look like it looks now. Not a fucking chance. So the thing, so what I'll say there then is, if you look at, you just said there, you compared a five hour piece to an eight hour piece, and an eight hour piece is always going to be yeah. better. What about the guys who go the other way? Because I know guys who've been tattooed, and it's took them five sessions. Yeah. To get, and I'm like, the work's not. It's a tiny nah, bit of know, work do you know on the body. What? So that, do you think people take the mick as well? It's not so much that they're taking the mick. A lot of the time, a lot of the time is like, like I, I think I spoke to you yesterday, and I mentioned about daydreaming through stuff because yeah, yeah. I know the technicals and the basics, like. I know what I'm, what I'm doing in the skin is fucking immaculate and mm-hmm. the the process, I can daydream through it because I'm not having to think about uh, doing a line perfect and that. It's just natural to just flow with it and, 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 and it just comes on quicker. Whereas with a lot of them, you see it and they even just looking at templates and stuff like, you'll see them just constantly, they'll do a tiny bit and then they'll have to look back at the image, zoom into the image and then they'll do a little bit more and it's just like, Things like that. I'm I'm kind of looking at the image at the beginning, and then I'm doing my own thing, really. And that a lot of that is just through. You've tattooed similar things, or you've done. Yeah. Certain. It's just experience, basically. You've, yeah. Because you've because you've seen stuff that many times, it's kind of already in you to just know to fucking I mean, do It's that like when I'm that. shooting a video for someone; they don't have to tell us what to do. I just no, know the angles and all that. You know, you kind of free yeah. flow, don't you? I think with. You, you've kind of mentioned there, it's not about how fast you are, although you're still kind of fast. It's, yeah, about, it's like, about having a one-hit it's, it's, session, it's, it's isn't it? It's a one-hit session. That's what's pulling the clients Do you think in, that's so, your selling point? Yeah, yeah. It used to be the time, and I get it, and like, I know why I was like, yeah, and I was always trying to do it quicker, and it was because, it, like, that back to that show-off thing, but you're not really showing off if you're doing a fucking a piece and you can see all the fucking scratch marks from your mags. You can see wonky lines, blown out lines, like big gaps of empty fucking negative space that are not even, not even like symmetrical lines or like parallel lines. And or even you see, it's your, they'll cut out big chunks of leaves for, on a lion or something like around it just to, just to fill a big area up. And I, I was doing it myself, but it looks fucking awful. Did you, did you ever think you'd become this big? Um, I know you're very not, humble. Not here, like right? this, nah. Not not a chance like this. Like I always knew I'd do well, mm-hmm. and obviously when like so when you met me, and it was the following wasn't that, but I was still booked up. I was still well in advance at the time. Mm-hmm. The 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 TikTok and the blow up kind of just set me for life more than anything, mm-hmm. really. Mm-hmm. And obviously made me be allowed to up the pricing basically. Because I know that there's going to be a lot of tattooists who are going to look at you and want to be like you. You've mentioned it, and the people will. They'll try and emulate that style. If I got into the tattoo game, I think I'd want to be like you. I think a lot of people would. It's natural if someone's doing well, whichever way they're doing it, people are gonna, you know, lean towards yeah, that. Yeah, well, obviously you see some, you see what someone that looks like they're flying. You're gonna to want to. So, what would you, what advice would you give to up and coming tattooists? Do you think it's about quality over everything, regardless? Yeah, that's the way it's gone now. Like if if you're gonna try and do it the way I'm doing it, you need to learn them technicals and the basics and you've, they've got to be immaculate. They've got to be so fucking precise and good and bang on that you can flow through the tattoos easily. There mm-hmm. is there is little corners you cut. There is ways to pull little bits of detail out, but some of the ways these guys are doing it, they're pulling way too much out. It's just, it's, it's so much simple tattooing and... It just, it just, it doesn't have the same look. It's not, it's not got the same, the same effect as just having like that extra bit of time on a piece and it actually having them details in there and then little bits of like say finessed bits of shade and everything smooth, the full coverage, everything saturated, stuff like that. So, so from a business element, then I'm interested in that because why do you need to do it as a one it when you could? do it over two days and make, make more money so just just for, for that that's my selling point that's always been my thing and if people are booking in with me you know that, that's that's why a lot of them have because they, they think yeah that's going to be done in one day like so for me to then be like nah i can't do that in one day or i'm going to split it up like i think that'd go against the reason why they even booked in with me to begin with so i wouldn't like to do that obviously like i don't like I say i only do arms and legs now anyway but i have took a couple of backs on this year, but that's been sort of a, like a premium price kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, 
because it's more than worthwhile we're doing it. And like with them though, I, I have said like, I'm going to do it over two days or three days or whatever, just, just to make sure you're getting the exact same quality as what you'd be getting on an yeah. arm or a leg, basically. The beauty is, I think as well, what adds to that selling point is, I know, well, I know personally a couple of the people who've, who've been here, well, quite a few lads who've you've tattooed, and I know people fly in from Vegas and all other places to get tattooed by you, and if they know they can just spend one day in Manchester to get the job done, yeah. I think that definitely adds to it, whereas other people, they'd have to book a three-night stay somewhere yeah. just to get tattooed. yeah. Yeah, I mean, even most of them, they still book a couple of days and they'll do they'll do a full leg, they'll do a arm as well, or they'll do, you know, they, if they're going to make such a long journey, or like you said, they're going to fly me out to wherever, they're going to they're gonna want a couple of days and get as much work as they can done, basically. Do you think you need to be tattooed yourself to be a tattooist? Um, you don't need to be, there's no... But I suppose you learn a lot from, from getting tired like, in terms of what your client's going to feel like. Mm. Do you think you need that though, the empathy side of it? Uh, I don't know, because I don't know if I've got much empathy for people when I'm fucking doing it. But... <laughs> I know, you haven't made your tattoo with me. Do you know, um, but, but what about from an actual like understanding point of view? Do you know what I mean? Like if, if, you, if you've got tattoos, you kind of understand how they want to look in the world. I know it sounds mad because you're head to tone tattoos. Yeah. And so if I'm coming to you and I've never got a tattoo and I'm like, right, Penga's mate, I want a full back piece. Are you going to be like, ads, mate, you've got any tattoos? Like, be careful. Nah, or you're like, I'll just sling it nah, on you. Nah, I mean, like I said, because I only do the, the arms and legs now anyway, mm. like it's not like I'm getting people coming in and asking for like daft areas. Like, oh, I'll go and stick that on my fucking forehead. Or, you know, <laughs> like that's when you'd have to step in and be like, right, look, come on, <laughs> behave yourself. <laughs> All right. So is there anyone who you wouldn't tattoo? Um, no, nah, there's no one who I wouldn't tattoo. <laughs> No, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just it's... thinking them TikToks of people. <laughs> I don't them TikToks. Oh yeah, uh, it's mad, mate. I think ultimately, I think that again because that's your selling point. People can come in for that for that day and get the job done. How do you respond to people who tap out? Do you get many people tapping out? <laughs> yeah, and it's quite. It's, it's one of them where you kind of you kind of know it when it's going to happen. Like you just know from the reaction from the word go. Like this is either going to be a long day. Where they're gonna grind it out, or like it's gonna be half a day and they're gonna tap. Like, there's... what is it you look for though when you know if someone's? You gonna... just the reaction, the the fact that you can, you can start on even in a in a, an easy area, and the first reaction is to jump out the fucking chair nearly, or just be like, whoa! Like you can just see like there's no way they're sitting for six, seven, eight, eight hours. <laughs> so, so do you think percentage basis? I know you kind of give us an exact, but how many people tap out? Would you say? Out of ah, it's not that many to be is fair. It not? Nah, nah. Like say, through the month you might get two, maybe. Right, I see. So. And what what happens with them when they tap out? It's, it's, do they it's lose the them. money? Do you yeah, still do I mean, the rest I still of it? Charge, it's my day. Do you know what I mean? Like you you come in with the understanding that this is what this is how it happens basically. So if you can't do that, don't book in with me basically. Like mm -hmm. if you don't feel like you sh you should know like if you come in for such a big piece of work that you can sit it basically so, so it's not it's like it shouldn't be on me to lose a day's wage because you can't sit there basically i agree with that and like. there's no issue with using numbing creams and whatever else and like if you forgot to use that or for whatever reason it doesn't work or like it's not it's not really on me that has it ever went wrong like have you ever mad someone like bleed too much or like have they ever collapsed or fainted <laughs> nah, or like that you get people that will faint here and there, or they go queasy. Like it's a lot of work, but to be fair, it's not really through throughout the tattoo that usually. It's more afterwards when the tattoo's done and they're stopped and say we're trying to get, we'll be trying to get images and video of it, and they're just trying to stand still, and because they're trying to stand still, like, and the, they've just yeah, they go a bit queasy. Like that that seems to happen. Like I'd say seventy percent of the time that happens. So what's the best protocol when you've been tattooed? Because I hear different things like shouldn't go in the sun, shouldn't go and lift weights. Yeah, like, I mean, not advised, obviously. Um, what would you say then for someone to have a tattoo and keep it as best as they can? If you don't know by now, I run a business called The Content PT. I create content for influencers, PTs, online coaches and fitness brands all around the world. So if you are someone who's in need for sexy content for your social media or you really want to maintain a competitive edge in your industry, drop me a DM on Instagram. As best they can. I mean, like you said, you don't really want to be going, especially for the first couple of weeks, you don't want to be in that sun or on them sunbeds. That's a, that's a given, but I mean, that's mm -hmm. just common sense, really. Um, 
you can go to the gym. There's no issue with going to the gym. Obviously, if you're going to train that area and that area is going to swell because of, you're filling the muscle with blood, then use your head and don't train that area. Like train a different to a different muscle group. It's not yeah. it's not to, not rocket science. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Um, and then aftercare wise, in terms of it, like for me, it's like a treating like treating a scratch. Really, you don't really go home and start plastering like you scratch yourself you don't really go on and start plastering creams and mm -hmm. whatever like you kind of let it leave it to itself really like you put a bit of moisturizer on it like once a day though I, I never say do more than once a day and just keep it clean it should look after itself really so obviously you are gone to the gym yeah you can say you're in good shape good looking lad you've got a massive social media following now and the reason why i put them together is because i wanted to ask you the question do you think that your image how you look physically affects how much business you get as a tattooist? Um, I don't know whether it affects much as much with how much business you, you, in terms of like people booking in, but in terms of the exposure I've got, probably a little bit down to that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's in that term, in that sense, would have boosted. But that colorates how many people you're getting in, though, doesn't it? Because if you've got a massive presence, yeah. Well, that's what I mean. Like if you, if, yeah, if yeah, you, yeah. you, yeah. I suppose the, the image and that goes with it, and like that's going to get a better, a better reach online, because more people are going to react to it and see it, and kind of watch and tune into it and comment and stuff. So that's going to bring your engagement up, and yeah, you're going to through that. Obviously, make more bookings, but so other tattooists, if you're listening, you want to get jacked <laughs> before you start getting into this game, like I suppose. How much of your social media do you rely on now? Um, could you get rid of it? Nah, I don't think you could because obviously, literally every booking comes through that. Like, obviously the, the doors are open on the day to book in, but like that's like people who've seen it's open and they know that's the probably the best way they can get into your slot. So, what made come you do down. them TikTok videos, Pengers? Because obviously, <laughs> I know that your, your socials were lot, growing, right, but as soon as you did TikTok, everything just yeah, went nuts, it mate. it was actually crazy, though. I had um, I had the naked cats, you know, the Sphinx cats. Aye. So I had one of them, and it was in COVID time, so everyone was bored. And I put a little, just to put a little video on with one of the cats, just holding the cat. Uh, it was only a kitten, not that big. Aye. And that video went fucking... Went off, <laughs> and uh, generated. Have you got that video? I want to show it on the screen. I'm not too sure if we have it. Might still be on there, yeah. Mm -hmm. But um, that generated about fifty thousand followers. Really, straight away. But I think that was like the algorithm for TikTok was was quite good at the beginning. Like, if you got into TikTok early doors, you could you could you could make a, a lot through just one or two videos going viral. You generate a lot of followers, which would bounce over to your Instagram. Whereas now. The same video going viral, well, I say viral, say over a million views, might generate t five or 10,000 followers, eight, maybe. Because I, so I was going to ask you this. The algorithm, I think, has been altered so much that I think I just got into it right at the fucking right time. Basically. Well, I've, I've got millions of views on TikTok, mate. A not. lot of them have got five million, four million, three. But it hasn't correlated me into them no. at all. Yeah. So I think at the start of TikTok as well, they used to have that button on the profile. So you'd click to follow on the profile and it would have the Instagram there. So you could click Instagram and it'd take you straight to the Instagram. So yeah. you follow the account. And like I said, when it started, when it went turbo for that couple of months, Instagram was just, just bouncing up like with it. So, yeah. What do you think about brand deals and stuff? I know you've worked with different brands over the years. Do you think, is that something that you just do for another stream of revenue? Do you think it's important, again, to build your brand? I mean, yeah, just, just an extra an extra bit of revenue. Or like you said, if, especially if someone's... The thing is, if, if, they're, if the product's good, you use the product anyway, sound. If it's just like a product you're not going to use, you don't really rate it, and they're offering you this and that, like, it's, just, it's pointless, like... It's, I do you get do you get hassled a lot? You you get certain. a little bit, not as much these days. Uh, I think because obviously now it's like yeah, if you want me to use your products, if you want me to do this, like then you're gonna have to pay me. Like it's not like, it, uh, but there's a lot of there's a lot of youngsters are um, like newbies into trying to get into it that are just happy to like have the product. So I think brands are seeing that, and uh, rather than saying like oh let's pay you five hundred quid to post this, mm -hmm. they'd rather send out. 500 products to someone Review. who's got 20k who's going to do it for free mm -hmm. and get so much more reach than what they're going to get off me you're doing a one video and paying 500 quid out so it's, it makes more sense for them to do that and like say because so many are just willing to do it for nothing now yeah i think that kind of industry of 
being a say influencer model fucking whatever you want to call it i think it's dying out a lot because of that because there's so many people that are just willing to do it for free because they think oh i'm going to be a model i'm going to be able to promote this brand or whatever i think that's why it's dying out to be fair you know what i think's mad about your story mate is the fact that the success that you've achieved up until this point but you're still in this shop every day aren't you graphic yeah why don't you just set up another shop or just do one tattoo every fly around the world and do it like I mean it's it's kind of starting to go that way anyway like I'm not obviously like going here there and everywhere I have been the last two months like I said Vegas I'm in Miami next month like it's that's good it's nice it's tiring though like mm. the time when you get back the jet lag but then obviously knowing you've got work like that that's hard work like so sometimes it's just you're in your comfort zone here mm. And it's nice to be in your comfort zone. Even like, I've just started doing <clears throat> a couple of days in uh, Birmingham at a studio down there. And just not knowing where things are and just a different just a different environment, sometimes it just knocks you off a little bit. Yeah. And it's hard to get going. Like, you, you'll go in there and you'll be all keen to start 9, 10 o'clock in the morning. And you've not started till 1 o'clock because nothing's in where you think it is or certain things go wrong or certain issues printing stuff and just little things that yeah, when you're in your comfort zone you ain't got them issues you know bang 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 it's done so do you ever plan to leave the shop um possibly maybe uh obviously we've got a few artists in there now so it's yeah once that's generating enough for me to just be like right i might do maybe one day a week or something mm-hmm yeah. Do you see many people asking for similar things now, tattoo wise? Yeah. Is that yeah. like a, what's what's trending at the minute, tattoo wise? Um, to be fair, popular Greek mythology used to be the clocks and roses. And yeah, all that, I mean, it? there's still people that ask for that stuff. Like is it's that? yeah, it's still it's still asked for. How um, does it make you feel when you tattoo something like that? Because surely that's a bit boring to you doing them things. Yeah, it is tedious. Oh is yeah. It? But I suppose it's still shouldn't affect the way you tattoo it. Mm-hmm. It shouldn't have, like you shouldn't be coming into the shop thinking, "Oh, I've got a shit tattoo today," and then it comes out fucking shit because you've fought and you already can't be asked. Because at the end of the day, that's that's your client's on for life. Like you can't do that. You need to be hundred percent up for your day, whatever the weather. Do you? Is there anything you wouldn't tattoo though? I mean, there's there's just a little bit like obviously like you say like I know you do arms things like that. I'd rather not be tattooing things like that, but I am tattooing a lot of like quite generic kind of things and and a lot of popular things all the time because that's just the type of clientele that are coming through the door. Like so, I suppose if you can try and do something with them images or mix it up slightly different, make all, all alterations and add stuff in that's just gonna give it a different look to all the rest, then. You, you got to try and do that really because otherwise you are going to get you're going to feel bored while you're doing it so if you can do that you're going to feel you're going to feel like yeah that's can, less can you notice through it. can you notice your work on other people if you ever see someone in public do yeah. you know if it's yours yeah yeah to be fair that's like most of the time like when people are coming up to you and they're like oh like I ain't got fucking glue yeah, <laughs> show yeah. me the tattoo and I know <laughs> but, that's mad that yeah, like because you go into autopilot just, I suppose yeah because you... you do like I couldn't tell you what I tattooed on Friday last week I ain't got a clue <laughs> yeah that's <laughs> you it, forgot as soon as, as soon as I'm done that's it done do you ever turn people away for what they want I mean like rev- rev- nah to be fair if it's an arm and a leg like no it's just the rest of the stuff like obviously I, I won't take it on unless like the dough is premium rate then mm-hmm. then i'll think about it but i don't need to i don't need to take them things on anymore so i don't and I, and a lot of that is just down to the way i'm kind of sat or stood through the day like i i, fucking, I would hate to be stood lent over someone's chest trying to do the neck or, or just working on the chest or on a back crouched crouched down like lent over for my back mate it's it's, it's not m- the best of shape now so to yeah, to just improve the longevity for how long I can I can actually do it for. I think that was a big thing in terms of just arms and legs. I'm sat comfy all day. I'm not. I still get back it. You still you still are drained because it's a long time to be sat still in that position. But you're not physically lent over, stood up, over yeah for yeah basically. It's, it's not think, good for you. I think that's what's wild about what you've done though, because it just shows how you've kind of 
carved out exactly what you want to do and people still come to you. Oh, so yeah, you're yeah. like, I'm only doing arms and legs and you're still booked out. Not like I'll do anything for the money. And that kind of shows how you've carved out the brand. And yeah. I think that's what shows success. I do very much the same thing. If someone asks us to film a certain thing and I'm not, like, I, I don't, don't even to do tolerate it. it. Like, yeah. I don't do that. That's no. not what I do. If you come yeah. to us, I know you want what I can give. Yeah. And I think ultimately that's what carves out the biggest brands and people who are successful in business, mate. And I think whether it's tattoo and no matter what it is, to be fair, I think if you stick to that, you're going to grow that base, a more true client base. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I think, have you tattooed many celebrities? Um, I wouldn't have said like like celebrity celebrities. It's more it's more the influencer type guys and yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, people with kind of big followings on like Instagram and TikTok and places like that. The um, does it make you want to tattoo them more because they've got a following and it could benefit I, I just your always said like obviously I'm, like a couple of my tattooist mates they tattoo people like footballers and people that have got massive massive followings and everyone knows who they are but a lot of these guys especially with the footballers like a lot of the clubs own the rights and like in terms of them posting anything for you they don't really yeah they don't really do it so like in the end and i know a lot of them sort them out as well like they'll knock like they'll knock it cheaper i'm like the guys are like 300 grand a week like you fucking making it cheaper but but just for the fact they want them to come in and then when they do and they realize that actually doesn't really generate me much this whereas compared to some instagrammer who's getting followed for the fact they've got tattoos and they've they like they look well they're they're coming in getting work done and like you you you, you're getting a big response back off it because that's what their followers are following for so Mm. yeah how do you pick the right tattooist for you? I it's got to just be down to what 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 you want doing style wise, and I suppose you've got to look through the work. You've got to make sure that that like if if you're coming in asking for something that there's just nothing on their page, anything like it, like it's just a bit daft really. That yeah. So do your research on the yeah, tattooist just, first. Yeah, obviously it's it's just common sense that really. What do you think about these people who tattoo in? Ibiza and that, and you know these little pop-up shops you see when you go to like Magaluf. I or mean, whatever. there's some really good tattoos in Ibiza, like, but mm-hmm. in terms of like where they are in Ibiza and the other ones that are like say pop-up ones, or then just there for like little tattoos here and there, mm-hmm. tiny little pieces that they're going to be doing on pissed up lads, girls, whatever, fifty hundred euros a time, and just knocking them out just one after another. Obviously, they're doing that for a reason. It's to make money. There's no other reason. They're not. They're not artists. Didn't, they're not really fucking asked what they're doing. They just want the cash. So I get it. If, in terms of a business point, if that's if you just want to be getting money, then it's a good fucking it's a good place to be. But if you if you're an actual artist that wants to do good pieces and be known for, you know, do do something that's going to get noticed, you like yeah, then them shops are not for you, kind of thing. Because the reason I ask that is obviously like for me, I know I, obviously I work with you. You've been a client of mine for years, <clears> mate, but when I was getting my first tattoo. I was looking around and obviously even though I worked with you, I was still like, what kind of thing do I want? What brought us to you wasn't because of the, it was how you are. Like, I think that, that, that's a lot for me that like, if someone's a decent person, you know, they're going to try their best on you. I didn't look at you like he just wants me money. I wasn't asked about that. Like it was more about actually the lad's going to put some work in it because it's me. How much of that do you think is important to actually understand the client? Or is it a case of, you want that, I didn't really care, I'll put it on you? I mean, or do you think it's nice? I think be- a lot of that is down to the client. Like, do you? Uh, if you're coming in, you're a sound guy yourself, like, that's the instant, like, it's going to be the same at each time. But I think if you're a fucking dick, like, I, I, like I'll, just, I'll just do your tattoo and, like, we won't speak and that'll be that. Like, Is it awkward when you don't speak to the... People? Nah, because, like I say, I kind of daydream through it anyway, so my mind's always ticking on other things. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. like, I'm doing the tattoo, but, like, if you're chatting and stuff and you have a good crack, like, sweet, like, but... Would you rather them talk or not when you're tattooing? I really ain't fussed. Are you not? Not, not fussed at all. As long as I like, think... So, you you, get you can still get a vibe from someone, like, even if they're not speaking, like... They're still like happy to be there and just like it's yeah. it's still chilled and it's so a nice atmosphere. But you can get guys that like you just think you you, you don't want to be here, like because <laughs> you know when you get a haircut though, it's awkward. I think when the barber doesn't talk to you, I don't. know. I think it's weird just looking at another bloke cutting your hair in the mirror and you're not like talking. It's it's a mad experience. I know it sounds <laughs> Maybe, weird. Yeah. I don't so know, like I kind of fall asleep. Around if hair, I was but. getting tattooed. And someone was just like silent. I'd be like, do you care here? Like, that's just me personally. I don't yeah. know. thought I'd ask a question anyhow. Do you get noticed a lot? Again, because your followings weren't massive, and I know you did anyway, really, but, and you're fully tattooed. Even if you weren't a tattooist, I think you'd get spotted because you look different. You, you'd get looks, I suppose. Do yeah. you get it, though? Do people notice you for your work? 
in social media and that. Yeah, like, but it, it was one of them, like, obviously when TikTok first started going off, that was crazy, that. Mm -hmm. Like, really fucking crazy. Like, it was everywhere. Um, and then it kind of died off and it seems to be more like when you're at festivals or when I'm in, like, in the rave or something like where, where, where there's a crowd of people that are kind of like, follow that kind of I don't know my, my follow myself and and that like like tattoos that younger crowd I'd say more than anything do you uh, like it it's 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 nice at times because you're like you know it does feel good any attention feels good so mm -hmm. but it's it is like it's it's a lot sometimes like I said especially when it was you, you it can be random but I can go out sometimes and there's none of it like you don't it's just sound and then next time you're there and you're just getting bombarded by people like you're like fucking hell, <laughs> and like yeah. it's more. I'm like, I, it's you're too nice sometimes. Like you just you don't want to say like fucking hell, leave me alone because you feel rude and obviously you you appreciate it. Like you appreciate the yeah. fact that them people who actually like what they see, what you do, and like they're actually wanting to come up to you and tell you that. Like it's it's that's that's a that's massively rewarding. Like so that's good. But like in terms of when you're out with. Like, it's more my mates, I suppose, that get pissed off about it, I would reckon. Like, right. Yeah. Go on, because they're ha like, hassling you, just, not Yeah, them. yeah, just because they're like, no, just because they're, they're like, hassling me, like, they're trying to get to somewhere and I'm getting stopped every fucking <laughs> five yards. Uh, like, it's, but it, it's, yeah. it's nice, isn't it? I think, I think, Eight mate, even the podcast, it's only small, mate. Now, I'm I'm getting stopped. Like, I see people in the gyms and say, oh, watch it. And I'm like, and I said the other day to someone, I was like, I can't believe someone recognised the podcast and come up to us. And yeah, like, oh. well, even yesterday when we come from... I, like, someone recognises yesterday, were you? And I'm in Manchester, and yeah. I'm thinking... But I, but I think it's it's lovely, but at the same time, sometimes it catches you off guard, because it's like, when I put a video out, I don't realise that there's... Like, I know that sounds mad, but I don't realise that's an actual person. I just say a number on a screen. Yeah, I don't yeah, think, yeah. oh, it's someone who sat and watched me and you chat shit for an nah, hour. Yeah, like, nah, I don't see that. It, like, yeah. It's weird, yeah. isn't it? That's what I mean. That's what you, you, like, I appreciate it massively when then people are like, they want to come to you and they want to say hello to you. Like, it is nice. It's rewarding. It's nice. Because you, you then feel like, yeah, fucking hell, I'm doing all right. <laughs> it's, it's mint, mate. And like I say, because I, I get the, obviously, even when we're creating content and stuff, I get the C kind of, we'll put that video, up, oh, that didn't work, or oh, that worked, bam, yeah. that's blown up. Yeah. Do you, do you think, in today's age, do you think other tattooists starting up should start on social media as well. Bits in their shop, I bits mean, of their life. Yeah, you've got it's just everything now, like, and it's free. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so exactly. Like, why would you not? Mm -hmm. You you can't like I said, it's not it's not an in, it's not an age now where people are just walking into shops and getting work done and like you can drum up business that way. Drop like when I first started and first opened up, it was like dropping flyers in the, around the community and you know, posting in leaflets like a thousand leaflets just just for opening up and like a couple of months in like dropping other deals and like now it's just one post on insta and everyone knows what what's going on or when your diary is opening or yeah <laughs> like you can like say you can generate you can generate a reach of, of of millions in off one post like it's you can't do that in it with anything else other than social media it's unbelievable because yeah, I, I feel like even for me mate i feel like i've witnessed your journey it's weird mate like because i've you're a good like I've i've got a few lads who i work with but not even from a working with point of view, just seeing someone. I've literally seen it go, and it's it's mint to see because it's like another lad who's just, and like I say, mate, you're in the shop all the time. So to see you grafting, but then seeing that side of things, it's, it's fucking unbelievable. Yeah. What is the future looking like for you? Um. Yeah, there's got a few bits lined up. <laughs> you don't want to talk about them? <laughs> Not yet. All right. Sam. But yeah, no, in terms of tattooing wise, uh, I think... Like you said before, I'm, I'm not so, maybe not so much leave the shop, but who knows, possibly. Um, just, I think I will be working a lot less. Because I know that, I mean, it might be something you're not telling me, but I know that you've even, like, casted for soaps and stuff, haven't you, in different things? Like, <laughs> yeah, just, you, that's not for me, bro. No, no, <laughs> no that's fair enough. Yeah, that's, I was thinking, me. is he going to be on the telly a bit more? Nah, I, 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 I got asked to do that. And I did it, but yeah, it's not It's not for me. No, that's fair enough, mate. Yeah. It's nice to hear that side of it as well, mate, because yeah. I think a lot of people would just jump to that attention. I know you've got a son. Would you want him tattooed? Tattooed? Mm -hmm. Um, if he wants that, I'm not obviously it's down to him. It's if if he came I'm, in at I'm, 16 and went or 18 and went, Dad, I want to get me neck done. Yeah, I mean, depends what depends what he wants to do with his life. Like you'd obviously look at like the bigger picture, I suppose, and like if if what he wants to do is if that's going to hinder him, then obviously you'd advise not to do that. But if it's not going to affect him in that way, then go for it. Do you know so I mean? so there's a question for you then. Do you think then if people are going at normal like vocational jobs and that, they shouldn't be getting tattooed? 
I mean, if that's the end goal, just that, maybe, maybe they might struggle, like maybe, but if, I don't know, if their end goal is to like be working for themselves and not have no, no, you know, no, what's the word, uh, like, yeah, like they don't want to go down that route. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, they, yeah, they don't want to be criticised for having that or it, it hinder them, then obviously then don't do it. But if, if if it's not going to affect them in any way in their end goal of where they want to get to, then go for it. Do you know what I mean? What's it, what's it, what's it matter? Has it ever went against you, having tattoos? Nah, I wouldn't have said, well, I wouldn't have no, I've not noticed it. So you never Basically, felt like you've never felt like, people are out? I mean, so, not, not really, I wouldn't have said... I mean, I mean, maybe to look at, but to talk to, I wouldn't have said so. Because I, I totally get them. I, I, I think they're meant to me. I, I, I feel like because I'm a creative person, I'm the type of person who would fucking get yeah, ones anyway. Yeah, yeah. But not that I have, but do you know what I mean? Like, I, I can yeah. understand that totally. But I do also see, and it's sad to see it, but I do see that, let's say you now sack this and you became a plumber. And you went to some old woman's house. Oh, yeah, house. I'd get, I think be a I'd bit get like, that. I'd get that. Like, yeah, yeah. Which I'd is get, mad, I, isn't it? You can see, like, certain people are a bit judgy, like, and, like, mm. or, I don't know what's a good example. I don't know, maybe you get in, you get in a taxi and the guy's like, oh, uh, can you give me the money up front? Like, it's like, yeah, is that because of, the, like, the way I look? <laughs> yeah. You've yeah. got to be confident, though, surely, to get fully tattooed. Because you're going to get attention. I mean, I don't say you have to be confident, but a lot of people think that it's going to give them confidence. A lot of people it does, to be fair. Yeah, that's does, fair enough, actually. It's a good point, that. It's not guaranteed, do you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> do you reckon you get more birds tattooed? Uh, I don't know. It's just, it's one of them things where... Do you think that's I why think, lads do it, though? Do you I think, think lads get tattooed think lads thinking they're going to get they're gonna do it? Or, like, I'll have lads where I've tattooed their, their arm, like, and then they've gone out, like, the weekend, like, fucking hell, pulled because he, he worked. Yeah, like, yeah, and yeah. It's like, fair dues. <laughs> it's mad that people actually take that. They want to... They tattoo. think that's going to happen. They yeah, tattoo themselves for the rest of their life because they think, they think it's going to get away. When you need to have the chat anyhow, surely. It <laughs> doesn't work, mate. Fucking wet, to be fair. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> Pengers, mate, I want to just say thank you for coming on. Yeah, no I feel like I've talked you all day because obviously I know you, so it's a bit like, which is yes, a bit chill crap, yeah. do you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, mate, I want to, uh, we'll have a part two at some point, mate, yeah. and drill a bit further into it all. No worries, bro. But thank you so much for your time, mate. Sound. Appreciate it, bro. So if you've enjoyed this conversation and you like things like this, make sure you click up there and watch this episode.